Hey guys, welcome to The Gray State and this very special episode of The Round is Up. And you might be asking, well, what makes it exactly special? Well, today I'm gonna continue to beat on that 365 that I got about a month and a half ago. It's a late April, early May 2019 NRA edition that's in Coyote. And let's not get into the whole NRA thing. It is a complete political cluster right now, regardless of what you're thinking, it's just crazy. I'm not getting into that. I just liked the color. I'm just gonna leave it at that and that's where it's at. What prompted this is that, like a lot of us, I just sit around on YouTube and I was watching some gun videos and I came across a, an older video, they're a kind of older video, I mean the pistol's not even that old, but it was showing some issues with the 365 ammunition from Six Hour in the 365. Now granted it was jacketed, it was just ball ammunition. It wasn't the uh, personal defense round that were having the issues, but I was able to find some stuff locally and I'm like, eh, eh, let's trust but verify. So I picked up a few boxes of it and today we're gonna shoot the snot out of it. So three tests today, it's gonna be the SIG 365 115 grain jacketed hollow point, not the ball ammunition. I will be shooting it through my 365, obviously. So it's gonna kind of be a continuation of the 365 reliability test. And then plus they add a bonus of the rounds up and see where the failure point is, if there is one today. So. Three tests. First, 50 rounds, reliability, no rhyme or reason. I'm just gonna shoot them fast and see if I can get this thing to fail and we'll, we'll just catalog that. Second test, 10 rounds chronograph. This has got a published velocity at 1,050 feet per second at the muzzle on the box. It's 365 ammo being shot through a SIG 365. Hopefully we see something close to the 1,050 that they're publishing. That's the goal there, just verify that. And then finally, third one, I wanna see what the performance of this jacketed hollow point in 115 grain is at 10 feet using the FBI protocol. So it's gonna be one in the bare gel and then one into four layers of thick denim. That's basically it. Let's take a quick look at the round itself and then we're just gonna start sending them. Okay, let's take a quick look at this round, but not overcomplicate it and just get shooting. So first, obviously today we are taking a look at the SIG 365 V Crown 115 grain jacketed hollow point. It's part of SIG's elite performance line in this round actually, well actually all of the 365 series is designed for CCW micro pistols and of course CCW stands for concealed carry weapons. So this round can be found on the streets for about 14 bucks a box and that's for 20 of them which gives us a per round price of about 72 cents. So compared to a lot of other offerings out there pretty economical. Uh, the round itself is, of course, a jacketed hollow point. The projectile on this model weighs 115 grains. SIG does offer a 124 grain variant of this round as well. The case itself for both the 115 grain and the 124 is nickel plated, which should help with lubricity and feeding. For this particular model, the 115 grain, it's got a published velocity of 1,050 feet per second on the box. So that's what I'm gonna be measuring against, especially because I'm using a SIG P365. Okay, that's it. Let's get shooting. Okay guys, first test up is gonna be 50 rounds downrange, no particular order, we're not looking at accuracy or anything that, like that. This is all about reliability. I'm gonna be looking for failures to feed, failures to eject, failures to fire. There have been some questions regarding uh, this updated model of the uh, mid-2019 365 regarding striker drag. So I'm gonna pull some of the rounds too and we'll take a look at some of the primers after they've been spent. So that's the game plan, 50 rounds, here we go. One down, no issues. That was 12 rounds, by the way. Next 10. No issues. All right, next 10, I'm gonna pause the cameras, reload for those final 18, and I'll be back. No issues. All right, let me pause the cameras. I'll be right back. Okay, here we go, final 18. I do wanna to say too, I did clean this uh, handgun before we got started. So I was, I was starting with a clean gun. I just wanna have full disclosure on everything here. So everything's looking good so far. Let's rip off these final 18. No issues at all. Last 12, uh, excuse me, last eight, here we go. There we go, last eight. No issues at all. Let me pick up some of these primers. We'll take a look at them here in a second, and then we'll move on to chronographing this round. 
Okay, here we go. This is going to be the chronograph portion of the test. We're looking at uh, 3.1 inch barrel, six hour, 365. The 365 round 115 grain jacket has a published velocity of 1050 per second. So hopefully we'll get pretty close to that. Here we go. 10 rounds. Ten thirty nine, ten sixty eight, ten sixty six, ten forty five, ten seventy two, ten forty four, ten thirty eight. Girls getting a little warm. Ten seventy one. 1058, 1063, and that was it, 10 shots. All right, so let's take a quick look at these here real quick. So average was 1057, right on point, highest was 1072, lowest was 1038, extreme spread of 34, not so hot, standard deviation of 13.6, number of shots, 10 rounds, no failures. Good to go there, now let's check out the ballistic test. Okay guys, so we are set up for the ballistic portion of this test. I'm gonna be doing two rounds. It's gonna be uh, one in a bear gel. Obviously we got that set up right now. And then one, I'm gonna go through some thick layers of denim, four of them to be precise. I do have uh, some wood pellets on the backside. I wanted to get out here kind of quick and didn't have time to recast a second block. So this one is pretty much good to go. It's been calibrated. There are a couple of air bubbles in it, but it should be good to go for this test. So I'm gonna be able to shoot right next to them. Uh, the second thing is I do have some wood pellets behind there. I do not know the density of it. I just put that back there as a stop. I've just got concerns that maybe this thing will not stop in 16 inches, but maybe I'm wrong and we'll see here. So um, for those of you wondering, it's a mix of mesquite, hickory, and apple pellets. I don't know the density of it, but it should be able to stop whatever comes through that block um, with the velocity that's left. So that's where it's at. Just kind of being a little silly here. So, all right, first one through, here we go. Fire in the hole. All right, let's take a quick look at it. Oh, lo and behold, it stopped right here, right at about 16 inches, 15 and a half. All right, I'll pull that out when we get back and take a quicker look at it, but for right now, it looks a-okay. All right, guys, here comes round number two, this time through four layers of loose denim. And we're rolling. Well, that was an interesting sound. Let's check it out. Knock the first one out. Popped it out, it looks like. Well, the second one tumbled. I got plenty of expansion on it. It did tumble. So let me poke around here and see if I can't find this round where it went. I have no idea. I did hear a ting, which was kind of interesting after I shot. So hopefully I didn't lose it. But let me see if I can find it. I have the second one here. It looks like it did tumble. It has a nice expansion. And it looks like it went just about 16 inches, but let me see what I can find. I'll stop the cameras and we'll take a look at these rounds back uh, at my base. All right. Okay, guys, I am back from the range. As you can see here, I'm in my cave. So um, I'm gonna do a real quick debrief on the ballistics portion of the rounds up for this round. And then I'm just gonna give some of my bigger closing thoughts and just uh, we'll wrap it up from there. So first things first, recapping what happened in the ballistics portion. So some good news and some bad news. Good news is two rounds went in, got some really great data. Bad news is I was only able to come away with one round that I found out of the two. They both gave us really good video evidence of what was happening with the round. So I have a working hypothesis there. So I just want to kind of cover and recap what happened. So round one went through and I'm going to change the camera angle here and show you um, that there is actually a significant difference in the entry size of the wounds uh, of the into the gel between these two rounds, between the one that went into bare gel and then the one that went into um, four layers of heavy thick clothing and then into the bare gel. So first one here on the bottom is the one 
that actually went into the uh, the bear gel unobstructed. And you can see it's actually got quite a bit bigger of a mouth as it goes in. And that's the one that's here on the bottom, as you guys can see here. I've tried to clean it up. I kind of hit it with the heat gun a little bit after I got back to make it a little bit more obvious. But the thing that was really interesting is on video, we can see here that the cavitation happened almost immediately on impact. And it's got this nice carrot taper and it landed about 15.5 inches from the end of the block. It did not over penetrate. The key thing here on the second one, there was a little bit of confusion in that video as to did the second one hit, knock the first one out? Did I was, was I just too close in the proximity between the first round and all that kind of stuff? And as it turns out, it looks like the second one over penetrated. It just fell out of the block and then still had enough inertia energy to bounce somewhere in ricochet, but not cause any damage and not enough to get captured into the bucket that I set behind just enough to crack it. I looked at the mold that I had the thing sitting on, the, meaning the gel block. There's absolutely no evidence whatsoever that the round actually hit with anything, came down in here. I spent about 10 minutes on site looking for it and could not find it. But that is the beauty of video evidence. So if we look here, two things. One, again, look at the top entrance wound here going into the gel. It's smaller. So that tells me that we did not have expansion as it immediately hit. It was clogged with that fabric. And with that clogging, I don't see any traces of that clogging going on in this block at all. I don't see any fragments. I don't see any pieces of threads, anything like that, that I would normally see after I shot a personal defense round through clothing into a gel block. It just didn't capture any of it. So the other thing here is if we overlay the video next to each other, this is just proof. I mean, it's video evidence is that the second round that went through the loose clothing, the thick loose clothing, and I should, I should add that, actually didn't start the cavitation and expansion of that shockwave until about seven inches into the block, which is quite a bit different than the first round. And then we saw it come out here again, hit this little tub, never to be seen from again. I think in the process, it did spin this original round and kind of turned it sideways. So it made it look like the second round stuck in there and tumbled and that's where my confusion came from. So um, where do we go from here? Well, from a penetration perspective, it looks like the second round did over penetrate, it clogged and it didn't expand like the way we wanted it to. So that's the bad news. So it's kind of a net neutral here. We got one that stuck and expanded beautifully. And to that point, I have my calipers here. And of course this is a nine millimeter round. And if I take a look at it and I expand it here and I take a look at it, I've got about 50% expansion. I'm at about 15.5 millimeters total and it's perfect. Whoops. It's perfect expansion when it went into bare gel. It's beautiful. It looks like a piece of art. Um, the other one, don't know. So it's kind of a lost cause there. So that basically recaps the ballistic side of what we're taking a look here. I mean, again, it's a nine millimeter personal defense round. I'm not expecting anything super crazy like some rifle round that's a, a frangible or anything like that. It wasn't that kind of destruction. It was very tame compared to those types of projectiles. So there you have it. Oh. All right, so let's put to bed the uh, the entire video. So first thing we did was a reliability test and you guys saw there, I had no issues. It just ate and spat out 50 of them, no problems whatsoever. I had no bad juju like the other person. Now granted, I think that video, they were actually having some problem with the jacketed ball ammunition, which is the practice stuff. I just ran the hollow points all day. It was 50 rounds, no issues. It gets a thumbs up there. I didn't have any issues. And then also just to remind everybody, I'm running a late, you know, April 2019, early May version of the 365. Uh, while we're talking about reliability, a couple other things I'm going to show you here really quickly. I brought back a bunch of the spent cases. I wanted to take a look and show you guys what the primers look like. Again, not seeing a whole lot of evidence of really bad striker drag uh, like they were seeing in some of the earlier variants of this. So hopefully that's figured out. I think I got about just under 1200 rounds or so maybe a little over 1,200 through my particular handgun right now. Um, haven't been keeping real tight numbers since I've been had, once I crossed over 1,000. So that's where we're at. Hopefully, fingers crossed, knock on wood, continue to have no problems there. Second test, I chronographed it again. The idea was 365 ammo through a 365 published velocity of 1050. I walked through 1057 across 10 rounds. No complaints there. It gets a thumbs up. So we're good to go there. And then finally, what we just talked about, obviously, was the ballistic test. It was two rounds, and um, I call it a wash. I mean, I got one that looks fantastic. I got one that I can't find. Video evidence says that the second one kind of over-penetrated, especially when you look at it here, but not by a whole lot, not enough to go into the pellets and be found. It did not come through the top. It wasn't a through and through. I don't know where it went. It just disappeared. Maybe it vaporized. Who knows? Um, but the video evidence shows me that 
I'm not completely comfortable with that seven inches of space before the cavitation happened. So I'm going to give it a net negative there or a net neutral, I should say. So where does that leave this round? Um, reliability wise, it performed fine. Performance wise regarding speed, it was fine. Um, whether or not I'm going to carry it as a personal defense round, not totally decided. Honestly, I'd have to go back and put another gel block behind this one and capture it and see exactly what happens with that round and what the total depth was. So sorry I wasn't able to come away with that for you today and we lost that round. But um, right now, that's where it's at. I can only give you guys the details. I can't give you a recommendation on it. If you guys want to carry it, go ahead. It went bang for me, so that's good. And the speeds were right. It, you know, everything else and accuracy when I shot it into the block, it was spot on. So at 10 feet, so I didn't have any issues there. It was not like it was shooting crazy or anything like that. Um, but the penetration, I need to go back and do some more work on it. So that's it for this one. Hope you guys found it informative, useful. You guys are able to make your own decision on this. Again, I'm just one guy shooting on one given day. Um, I don't do it professionally. I do this for fun for the shooting community. If you guys have any comments, questions, anything like that, be sure and leave it down in the comments below. I do try and answer them. And if you guys found this in, you know, enjoyable, useful, or anything like that, I'd appreciate a like or a subscribe just so that we can build some traction and put more, um, you know, informative data-driven gun information up on YouTube and uh, make sure that we're presenting ourselves well and uh, doing a, a service to everybody else. So that's it. Until next time, stay safe.